Community Motors West Side, the GM Superstore next to Cinema West. Community Motors of Mason City, we give you more. However, just a point of clarification, I asked very early on if we were going to have a discussion specific to the agreement, and I thought it was going to follow the presentation. I, and that, that may be germane to my motion. Yes. I'll, I'll make the motion if you desire. I guess if you're asking, are we going to discuss all the details of the contract tonight? Is that what you're asking? I think before this board can ever vote on an agreement, we need to know any concerns that this board might have with the agreement that we have before us so that at the point in time we come to vote on the agreement, we've gotten all the issues out on the table and hopefully we have a document that's pretty close to being final. I guess I would defer that for our attorney, but in my mind, you know, we can ask questions about the contract all the way through, but we just got this draft of this contract and we need to get it get studied by our legal authorities. He needs to get back to their legal authorities. And, you know, there's probably 50 questions that we have. And then get that final draft back there and get that final draft to the full board and see where we're going to go with it. Is how I, I would see it going. But, I think we're seeing this very similar. You just said 50 questions. I know I have one, so I don't know what the other 49 are. And it may be that people, maybe those 49 don't cover questions other people have. And I think if we're going to ask the attorney to go finalize the deal, he needs to be aware of every issue that anybody might have. Well, technically, that is not on the agenda. Well, I addressed that, I addressed that concern yesterday. <coughs> I think it would help me if uh, Mr. Marquis or any board member had a comment about this contract yep, or a suggestion. And I'm sure you've only been receiving those tonight. I would say that this is a preliminary contract, and I have a number of concerns of my own based on my own experience. And information that has been developed over the last weeks, including at the executive committee meetings. And I'm not really ready tonight <coughs> to uh, get into all of that, but I would like to uh, hear from anyone here so that I can add that to my own <coughs> concerns so that when I begin discussing this with uh, Ms. Arthur, we'll be able to uh, get to the substance of it Okay, so are you looking for concerns before or after I make my motion? I think it would be proper if you made your motion. Okay. So many seconds. That okay, I, I will do so. I request that we call for a special LNI board meeting on or before January 26, 2012. That'd be two weeks from tonight. With the sole purpose of the meeting to either approve or deny an agreement between LNI and CES. The executive committee shall determine the exact time and place of the special meeting and notify board members accordingly. Okay, thank you. The motion's been made. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion so we can start discussion on it. Okay, motion made and second. Now we'll have some discussion. <coughs> and I would entertain the discussion. I think Jim asked if anybody has questions about that contract that he needs to know about. For the reason we can talk about it, I guess. I think it's important to hear uh, from uh, Bill and our staff uh, their opinion of this proposal or this agreement and uh, the general consensus, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down with all of this as well. I think that's important for every board member to to, to know or to have that in, in their, uh, their thought processes with that. I'd like to see that as part of this uh, discussion at some point. I don't even know what the date January 26 has to do with anything. You're being bullied by Mason City. <laughs> okay, please let's keep this. Try to keep it safe. Why do we have a date of January 26th? Okay, 
steps or anything else or anything? Yeah, basically the project has become time sensitive and January 26th is critical to approval of the project. This project took longer to make it through the Zoning Board of Adjustment. It was a very thorough process, a lot of good came out of that process, but it took longer than what was anticipated, which now puts the duration of the project relative to the permitting of the DNR, construction of the facility, and getting the plan online at risk with some of the key dates that they have to make because some of the very things that have been talked about tonight. Um, for this project to move forward, it really needs to clear this hurdle by the end of January. <coughs> I think it's important to keep in mind, I'm not asking anybody's opinion on the agreement tonight. I'm not asking anybody to approve the agreement. I'm not asking anybody to deny the agreement. And I haven't uh, uh, lobbied a single person on this board. All I'm trying to communicate to the board is that the project has become time sensitive. The landfill of North Iowa has a, a, a stellar reputation in the state of being a premier organization. And I don't think we want to be uh, a proactive board that would let an opportunity like this fail because of indecision. So the key thing is, is two weeks enough time to get the information that we all feel that we need to be able to make an educated decision. And in the absen absence of con uh, discussion of the contrary, I have to assume that two weeks is enough time. We haven't even discussed the contract. That's a point I made a few minutes ago. I'm trying to push us to the point where we discuss the contract. Is that going to be enough for legal? Well, my people have bought a house in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's closing out in golf takes 30 days. Um, and I'm sure our lawyer has more clients than just Al and I to deal with. I just don't like a deadline of January 26th. I just feel like we're being pushed and rushed and there's still a lot of questions to deal with. And this contract, I have a whole page of stuff that I don't like about it.
mean, they pay their dark taxes <coughs> to be picked up and, and everything. LNI says they have one scale operator. Well, if we send that scale operator to CES, does that mean we have to hire another one for here and train them? And what about all the benefits and everything else that we pay our employees? They don't pay any of it. $30,000 doesn't seem like a, a sound amount. Um, <coughs> then you go on page four, it sounds like we're providing all the responsibility for quite a lot of this process of getting garbage and everything else to ERS so they can make money. <coughs> well, we're a public entity right now. We're for nonprofit. We don't make money, and I hate to see it go to that. If anything, I think we should try and find something to do here to keep it a public entity. Um, I just, there's a lot of things like this that I don't like about this agreement. Okay, I think Bill has some questions here. Roger, sorry. Three times it was referred to as um, all the MSW and tires. You said you did any uh, clarification on the tires, correct? Mm -hmm. So the best burning, best heat they've got is tires. Probably. So there is no concerns to that. All right. Upon request by ERS or CES or whoever, we shall supply them in such quantities as requested. That means we are on demand. If we can't, then what? Another line up on G, it says LNI shall accept at no expense to ERS. Well, if you're going to take our corn and give us back ash, you should pay like anybody right. else for it. Because of the fact now we have to do something with it at a different cost. Originally, you wanted $5 a ton charge to us to take our garbage to you, but you know, for some reason, miraculously, you could absorb that 350000 a year. That's real quick math, real fast absorption of cost. Why was it on the initial project? Roger, if I can interrupt you for a minute. Um, the first point you made, what was the contract paragraph? Uh, page three. Number H on number four. And 
more importantly, what exposure to risk it presents for it. More importantly. Well, Bill has some questions here. We'll let him. <coughs> Two particular uh, um, persons, scale operator and hazardous materials technician. Uh, 30000 is isn't going to cut it for either one of them. And I have a lot of problem hiring a new staff to provide other staff to another facility. Getting ready to go through now, or anybody else I just had one question. I've asked you know, maybe to look into, but we all signed a 28 e agreement bring our municipal refuse to this landfill as a landfill. Are we going to have to amend our 28E agreement to allow this waste to leave this landfill and go to another place? And if so, that's going to take time. And my belief is in reading that contract, we will have to ratify that 28E agreement. I don't think there's anything in there that says that that landfill can take that and do anything to bury it here or take it someplace else, or to direct us to take our garbage trucks there? <coughs> That's a question that needs to be answered. I agree with that observation. If you look at uh, paragraph 18 of the agreement, there are some specifics, <coughs> but as you will notice, all of those contingencies have to do with ERS. There will have to be some contingencies that relate to landfill also, yeah. or if there aren't, you would be in violation of this contract with day sign. And those contingencies will be, in my judgment, at least the following, that there be approval by the DNR of an amendment to your comprehensive plan to permit this diversion of waste, that there will also be an amendment of the 2080 agreement and also that each of the member communities, which now has an ordinance that directs the waste to be placed here, permit you to have the waste be diverted elsewhere. Now, that wouldn't necessarily delay <coughs> this contract, but I think it would have to do again with some contingencies or conditions fulfillment of which would be necessary for you to be able to enter into the contract. You will see later that there are a number of representations and warranties made, including to the effect that entry into this contract would not violate any existing agreement. <coughs> that is not true. And I would not recommend that you enter into a contract making a representation or warranty that is simply untrue. 
And having said all those things, if the direction of the board is that we negotiate the contract, my duty is to negotiate the contract. And I think that can be done. I sure would like more time than 10 days or two weeks. But I also understand that in business there are occasions when things are time sensitive. And I have a good working relationship with the attorney for the other side. And she is able and diligent. And I would hope that we could put something together. I would prefer to have probably several months for something of this magnitude. Because there will be considerable backing and forthing on it. And when you have such a rigid timeline, <coughs> it makes that very difficult. And I think one of the risks you run in a timeline like that is that you end up with an imperfect agreement. And that is not good for anybody, either side. You're talking about a 20-year relationship here that we are to put together the structure of it in 10 days or two weeks. That's a difficult one. Whoa, 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 whoa.